hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about a nice little feature that's being included in the latest version of Terra Masters operating system for NAS TOS still currently in beta and if we make our way into the control panel here again I know I should be on the bottom right of the screen during this if we make our way into the system we can see there that we're running the new TOS 5.0.93 version now there's lots of new little cool features being included in it I've got a full overview planned for TOS but the reason I wanted to talk about this one today as uh, it's one of those features that I would say brings it even closer into the kind of popularist form of network attached storage and again let's be realistic they are kind of emulating an existing feature from one of the the biggest brands in NAS Synology but they have now integrated a fluid and flexible RAID system known as T-RAID. So much like any RAID I'm just going to show you here we've got a couple of drives installed in this system as you can see we've got a couple of 8TB WD RED drives and as you can see we can go with protection or no protection I'm going to go with data protection so one disk redundancy but instead of selecting RAID 1 I'm going to select T-RAID. Now we're going to go ahead and confirm we're going to let this start to create our new RAID system there in the background and while it does that I'm going to kind of explain the importance of all of this and then carry on with our T-RAID. So fluid and flexible RAID systems are RAID systems that allow you to mix and match drives. Now no one is going to mix and match drives on day one. That would be madness. If you did that, there's every possibility that you know you've bought you know a four, an eight, a ten TB drive from lots of different retailers. There's just no point. Most people either fully populate a NAS on day one with drives that are exactly the same or they half populate it which is what i've done with today's video this is a four bay nas i've only put two drives in sight now why are flexible fluid raid systems like synology's hybrid raid system and this t raid so important well as time wears on, as the years go by, you eventually may start running out of space. Maybe you have a drive value in your RAID array, and you have to go out and buy more drives. And when you do that, if you're using traditional RAID, such as RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 6, you can only use the same drive in every single one. So you can't go ahead, for example, and put a 1TB drive in, and then three 10TB drives, and think you're going to get all of that storage. You won't. Traditional RAID um, configurations, 1, 5, and 6, for example, they will class every single drive as whatever the smallest available drive is. So if you had a 1 and 3 10TB drives, it would classify all of them as 1 terabyte. So again, you lose out on a huge amount of potential capacity there. Whereas, when you use flexible and fluid rate systems, what they do is they make sure that you've always got one of the biggest drives available worth of safety net or redundancy. So... As long as you always have at least one drive's worth of redundancy, in this case, using our original analogy of a 1TB and three 10TBs, as long as you've always got 10 terabytes of safety net in the redundancy, it gives you all the other capacity. To put that into perspective, once again, in a RAID 5 array, you would have one 1TB and three 10TBs. In a RAID 5, you'd only see three terabytes of capacity. But in T-RAID, much like Synology's SHR system, you would have 10 TB of saved uh, safety net storage and 21 terabytes of available capacity. So again, it's about how you can configure and add drives over time. And SHR has been an enormous drawing point for a lot of home, prosumer and SMB users. And now TerraMaster are rolling this in along with a bunch of other features in t uh, in their T-RAID and TOS system, this is going to be really appealing. So what we're doing right now is we're building our two-drive um, T-RAID configuration. And what I'm going to do in a moment is head over to the NAS and I'm going to install two 14TB drives. And then I'm going to show you what you can do with this system. As you can see, the synchronization is going to take a while. So what I'm going to do is fast forward to the completion of the RAID array. You're not going to have to wait, it's going to take you a few seconds. And then from there, once our storage pool is complete, and as you can see, we're going to have 8 TB of available capacity, T-RAID is going to allow us to install the bigger drives and therefore get way more capacity back for our money. Let's fast forward to the completion of the synchronization of storage pool one. 
Okay, so fast forward a day. Here we are. Let's log our way back into our Terror Master. I know the raid has completed because there are notification for it. And as you can see, that raid environment has been completed. So if we make our way into the control panel there, go into the storage pool, we can see there is our T raid. The T raid is complete. We've got those two drives, those two 8TBs in that T raid one drive uh, redundancy configuration there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just make my way over to the NAS. Two seconds, I'll be right back. I'm just going to install a couple of drives. So I don't know if you heard that. I was just installing a couple more drives into our TerraMaster NAS there with TOS5. I can just hear them spinning up. Now they are uh, 14 TB uh, drives there. So they are quite bigger than the average bear there. And we're just waiting for the system to recognize them. Generally, uh, what happens is, and you can ignore those NVMEs, the TerraMaster system, once you introduce new drives, does have a tendency to just very quickly uh, do a quick scan of the drives and double check compatibility and as you can see there at the bottom of the screen there are our two 14 terabytes there we've got the NVMEs as well we can largely ignore those and if we make our way into the hard drive manager we can go all the way down and we can see those are a couple of Seagate 14 TB drives inside there so in a traditional raid as mentioned if we tried to combine these together it would class both of those drives as 8 TB overall whereas now what we can do is make our way into the storage pool, have a little look, analyze it there. Now we can go into the settings menu there. We can have a little look. We can see what it's telling us to do. We've even got fast repair as well, which is when uh, drive media, if your RAID is only partially full of data, during a fast repair, it only um, repairs the area of the disk where there is data and then it nulls the rest. Once again, Synology introduced this feature first, but again, TerraMaster have introduced it into their setup remarkably quickly there, for good or for bad. So we can have a look there, and as we can see, there is our redundant area there. There is those two 14 TB drives there. And then what we can do is start integrating these into it there. So we're not going to create a brand new RAID at all. What we're going to do is edit our RAID, and we're going to add hard drives to the RAID there. So again, what we can do is click Next. We can see we've inserted our new drives already. From there, we're going to go ahead and connect our two 14 TB drives. From there, oh, apparently we're only allowed to select them one at a time. Don't worry, we will make our way in. And as you can see, there is the drive being introduced. We click confirm, and now we're installing our first of our two 14 TB drives. Once again, we are still talking about a RAID rebuild here. Uh, not in the conventional sense of like a resync from a failure, but what's happening right now is it's going to start integrating that 14 TB drive into our allotted RAID configuration. It's reconfiguring, and as you can see, we've got that 8 TB there, and once it's integrated, and again, we're going to have to fast forward again, because this will take more time to do, that 8 TB is now going to up to is going to upgrade up to just shy of 16 TB. And when we introduce our next drive, that's when things are going to get interesting. So for now, what we're going to do is fast forward to the completion of this RAID array in T RAID and see just what happens when we've added our first disk and start our second. Okay, so it looks like our RAID has completed. We're just logging into the system now. We can see there notifications on the side of the screen. A couple of days have passed, at least for me. Again, it was the weekend. Some of us have got to have a little bit of time off, of course. Um, but if we go into the control panel there, go into the storage pool, we're able to see that our drive has now been accepted into the RAID. But do bear in mind, again, that this new fluid RAID system will give you one of the biggest drive available's worth of capacities. As described, our terabyte level there is at around 14, 15 TB there, as it's classing that 14 TB as the single biggest drive. Where we really get to feel the benefits of um, this new fluid RAID system is going into edit once again and adding our new drive. So we go there, click next, we've added our drive, select that 14 TB, and then confirm. So once again, we are now adding the drive. Now this will add a new 14 TB drive into the mix, and that will mean that in theory, we should have the 8 TB, the 8 TB, and the 14 TB, and one 14 TB in uh, redundancy there. Bear in mind, of course, the way the calculations of terabytes work against gigabytes, that a 14 TB drive is realistically 13 point high 900s. So do bear that in mind, but for now, once again, let's get this thing up and running 
and then we're going to fast forward to tomorrow where we're hopefully going to see the completion of the raid configuration here let's fast forward okay so i'm back it's very early here in the uk it's two minutes to six in the morning uh, I'm, I'm back at the studio we're going to see how our raid is doing i apologize if there's extra noise in the background i've got a big nas testing here in the background and unfortunately because of the layout of the office i can't really move it around without you know maybe disrupting the data but here we are we can see there at the bottom the storage manager did rep um, did let us know that the raid was complete. So let's go into the control panel and drum roll. Should have checked this maybe before recording. And boom, there we are. We have got our big old T raid right there. And as you can see, it has now embraced the 14 TB drive. And as you can see, we now have 27.26 terabytes of storage there available. Remember, had this been a traditional RAID, it would have classed every one of these drives as 8TB and therefore given us 24 terabytes overall. But instead, it's allowed us to embrace that extra storage. And once again, do bear in mind that this is a roundup process when it comes to the drives. So even though it says 8TB here, normally that means there's 7 point whatever uh, terabytes when it's all broken down there but that's t-raid we can see that it works again from here we can do whatever we want we can go ahead and create ourselves a brand new volume again we can appropriate that whole storage using an existing storage pool we can go ahead there's their storage pool one give it one test one and again we can embrace the whole storage if we choose or start provisioning it all the way out um, that's really it the idea that terramaster have got a fluid raid system is another example of this brand kind of seeing what everyone else is doing and seeing the best bits and then embracing it into their system for good or for bad. Um, we will be doing a continued look at TOS 5. Do remember that T-RAID is not available uh, until uh, TOS, that's the Terra Master Operating System, is rolled out to version 5. But you can take a look at it in the beta, but do bear in mind the beta is still not perfect and I would still wouldn't trust it with your integral data until the full RC release candidate is out there. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments if you did. Click like if you enjoyed the video. It helps me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. If you want to follow this subject and this brand more, click subscribe. And the free advice section is linked in the description along with a few other articles on TOS. So do check those out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.